Hello everyone, my name is Mr. N Jersey and welcome to my channel. Yes, we are back with some more version 1 content for you here in Stormworks. Now, in this video, we're going to be having a look at the new modular engines that are over in the experimental branch. I'm going to show you how to get one up and running. We're going to go over all the different components and how you can actually hook them up and build your own modular engine here in Stormworks version 1. But before we get started, if you are enjoying these videos, don't forget that like and subscribe button and remember to click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. And while you're watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos. So I said, let's get straight into and get started with this video. And getting started, we're back here in Stormworks and we're going to be checking out the new module engines. Now I've seen a lot of people talking about this and I think this is probably one of the most highly requested videos that I've done from today and also from yesterday. So let's have a look at the new module engines. We're going to be breaking them down and actually show you how you can actually get one up and running. Now, of course, this is an experimental, so it is due to get changed and there are obviously going to be some changes and some features and things get moved around as we get closer to actually getting this in the public version. But let's look at it now as it is in version 1.0.1a. So the first thing, as you can see, we've already got the module engine built here. I'm actually going to be building a brand new one and show you guys how to actually go and build it. But you can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we obviously have the actual crankshaft there. We have the cylinders on top, some exhaust, some fuel, some air, and then we also have some coolants underneath it. Uh, this one actually has a starter and it also has an alternator on it. Um, so it actually does generate power and also electricity at the same time. Now we can get this started simply by clicking on the starter. It starts running and you can see it starts building up the RPS. I can obviously drop the throttle here to bring the RPS a little bit down. And we can actually go and have a look at all the individual components. You can see the actual pump is working. Uh, it is actually bringing, you can see, minus 9. 9.97 of liquid it's going through it uh, you can see the engine starter is off currently the alternator is producing electricity so it's producing 0.99 worth of electricity here uh, the drive bolt is going the actual intake is bringing air in just on the right there and you can see it's bringing fuel in just on the left here uh, along with that we can obviously go and hover over the exhaust too so you can actually see how much um, air or exhaust is going through it and we can also look at the cylinder and we can see the actual temperature of it. Now, moving forward, I would like to see them add temperature on um, as a node somewhere in this engine so we could report out on it because I don't really feel like we should go up to the engine every single time to see what the engine temperature is. Uh, along with that, we also have the clutch and you can see the power going through it and then obviously the propeller at the end, just for our example. We don't have to have a propeller, we could have a wheel, we could have a rotor blade, we could have multiple different things. So let's bring this back into the workbench and let's just start brand new. I'm actually just going to go and get rid of all this and we'll start brand new here. So you can see that we've got a currently an empty base that we're going to be working with. The only thing that I've got still on it is a battery, some fuel and also a couple throttles and dials and things to go and read the data. But let's start building the actual engine itself. Now, the first thing we're going to want is to obviously find the modular engines. If you're in the experimental branch, you can go and scroll down. You can find the modular engines over here. Now, if you want to get the experimental branch, you can obviously have a look now. I'm going to show you guys how to get it. It's pretty simple. So to switch over to the experimental branch, all you have to do is go into your Steam library, right click on your game and go to the properties. Once you've got the property screen up, you can go over to where it says betas and you can make sure that you have selected the experimental public testing branch. Once you've done that, you can press on the close. The game is going to go and update. And once it's gone and update, you can click on the play button and it's going to go and launch the game for you. Once you've got it installed and you've got the experimental branch, obviously just keep an eye out at the bottom where it says version 1.01a. Obviously this number might change in the future, uh, but currently as it is as of today, which is the second day after release, this is the current version of experimental branch that we have. Now actually building the engines, you'll notice there's a couple different components here. Not all of these components are compulsory to build an engine. That's the beautiful thing about a modular engine is you can build it as you want. And the example I'm about to show you is not going to be the same as everyone else's. Everyone is going to have their own design. And that's the lovely thing about modular engines. But they're all going to be having the same principles. The first thing we want to start off with is going to be the drive belt. Okay. The drive belt we can place at the front of our engine. Okay. This is going to be the starting point of actually building our engine. You'll notice on the drive bolt, it's got a couple different things. 
at the front over here it's got a pulley system and then on the top side bottom and other side it's got a mounting system okay this is where you can go and put your starter your alternator and your pump for example at the back of it you'll notice there is also a round outlet here this is where you're going to be attaching your crankshaft now we can go and get the crankshaft you can see it's found once again inside of our modular engines we can go and place it on top of our actual drive bolts now you don't have to have five of these or 10 of these or 20 of these you need at least one of the, these okay at least one of these in your creation now you'll also notice that this has got some mounting points on the top sides and also at the bottom of it at the back it's got the crankshaft itself now you will notice that you can actually click and drag these to place them down you can create as many of these as you want to or as little of these as you want to i'm going to just stick with one at the moment once we've got that done, we can start adding the clutch on. A clutch will allow us to obviously toggle whether power goes through or if power doesn't go through. We're going to be adding that at the end of the actual crankshaft itself. Okay, so you can start to see we're coming up with a nice little design here. The next thing we want to do is we want to add our cylinder heads. Okay, now cylinder heads work in a bank system. So you'll notice that I can place four across here and that's now four cylinders. Where I'm saying it works in a bank system is they can all share fluid and they can all share actual air between that bank. If we add another bank of them over here, they all need to have their own, once again, air and fuel systems going through them. For our example right now, we're just going to stick with one bank of cylinders at the top of our engine just over here. Okay. Once we've got that done, the next thing is we need to provide air and fuel to that bank of cylinders. To do that, we're going to be using an engine intake manifold. We can add this wherever we want. You'll notice on the cylinders, they have inlets on all sides of them. Okay, they do not have at the top, but they do have on the sides. I could place it here at the front. I could place it at the back. It's completely up to you. For our example right now, I'm going to be placing at the front of our engine. Once you've got it placed down, you'll notice that one side has air and the other side has fuel. Now, for the purpose of my example right now, I'm going to be just switching the direction of this because I have my fuel on the other side. Now that I've got that place down, once again, you can see that if we hover over it, it actually tells us which side is the air and which side is the fuel. Okay. Now to get air to our engine, I'm just going to be using a fluid port. You could use an air intake. You could use quite a few different things. I'm just using a fluid port for our example right now. The next thing is we want to connect our fuel, which I've got just over here, and I'm going to be connecting it just over there. I'm going to be using a fluid hose connector, also known as a fluid anchor, and I'm going to go and connect this up using some rope. Now you could actually build the actual tank directly into the engine to make it self-contained, but for our example, I'm just going to be placing it with a rope and I've labeled it in red so you guys can clearly see where the fuel is going in and also where the air is going in on the right hand side. Okay. Once we've got that, we can start adding some additional components. The next thing we're going to need is some exhaust for these cylinders. Now, once again, it's up to you on how you want to build your exhaust system. We can come into our inventory and you'll notice that we've got four, three different exhaust components. We have a corner piece, a straight piece and a T piece. I'm going to start off with some corner pieces. I could place it here at the back. As long as this bank of cylinders has at least got one exhaust, it will work. I'm going to actually placing it all along here so it looks quite cool. So I'm going to go across the sides here and I'm going to place a corner piece at the beginning. And then we're going to go and put some T pieces to go out. So you can see here, we're kind of building our engine. It's starting to look like an engine now. Okay. So that takes care of the exhaust. Now, currently, as it is in version 1.0.1a, there is no actual exhaust particles or rendering coming out of the engines. Okay. This is probably going to change, but as it is right now, this will work. We don't actually actually have to add an exhaust port on the end of this. Once we've got this done, there's a few other things that we still need. The next most important thing is going to be engine cooling. How are we going to cool the engine? Well, we've been provided with an engine fluid pump. Now, engine fluid pump can be mounted, and I'm going to be mounting it here at the front. So you'll notice that on the actual pump itself, it's got this little cool mounting system. So you can see over there. So it's designed to fit at the front on your drive belt. 
So we can go and place it down. I could place it over here. I could place it over here. It's up to you on where you want to place it. Once again, I'm just going to place it here for the purpose of the example. Okay, and you'll notice there's a couple things on it. The first thing first is that it's got its actual pulley system here at the front where it's going to be connecting to the drive belt. Along with that, we can also see that it's got a fluid in and it's got a fluid out. Okay, cool. So this is like a little one by one self-contained pump. Really pretty cool. And it's being powered by the engine. The next thing is we need to get that fluid that's coming through this pump into this engine. And that's where we get the actual engine cooling manifold. Now, you can connect it just over here, as simply as that, or you can place it somewhere else in your creation. I've seen a lot of people saying, well, you have to connect it over to your cylinders. No, you don't. You can place this anywhere on your engine, okay? As long as it's connected either to the cylinders or to the actual drive shaft itself, the crankshaft, okay? You can place it anywhere you want. For our example right now, we're gonna be placing it here. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna connect up our cooling system. Now, you can do either a radiator, you could do a fluid tank, there's multiple different ways you wanna do it. For our example right now, I'm just gonna be connecting it up to a fluid tank. So I'm gonna be going over there with a corner piece, I'm gonna be going over here with a corner piece, another corner piece here, and then lastly, I'm gonna get a T-piece. And the T-piece is then gonna go and connect to my tank, okay? I'm gonna place the tank down so it's got extra fluid in it, and I'm gonna make sure it's got water, okay? Ideally, you probably want to connect this to a radio, depending on the temperature, but I haven't really seen any issues at the moment, but obviously I haven't done that much ex extensive testing just yet. Now that we've got the cooling, we've got the fuel, we've got the air, we've got the exhaust, we have our clutch, we can start adding the very last part of our components. The next thing that you have to have on your engine is going to be a starter. This is a way to obviously start your engine up. So once again, you can scroll down to your modular engine inventory and you'll notice that we have a modular engine starter. Okay. Once again, this is designed to be mounted on top of your actual drive belt here. So I can place it down at the bottom. I can place it on the sides. I can place it wherever I want to, as long as it's on my drive belt. So I'm going to place it over there. That's going to allow us to obviously start the engine up. Along with that, there is one additional piece you can still add if you want to, and that's going to be the alternator. Adding an alternator onto your engine is going to be able to produce electricity. Okay, so it's going to produce electricity from the engine itself. This is pretty cool. So I can place it once again just over there. You don't have to have this, but it's a nice thing to have. Once we've got that done, you would now need to go and connect your clutch to your power. This could be a wheel, this could be a propeller, this could be a, pretty much whatever you want, any one of these power outputs. I'm going to connect it to a small propeller for our example right now. Once we've got that done, we've actually got all the components that we need. But even if I go and connect this all up, I know for a fact that this is actually not going to work. Okay. And I found this while I was doing my testing is that because I've got this as a raised system, imagine I didn't have this fluid tank over there because I've got this as a raised, even though it's the same body, it has to physically be connected to the body with a block. Okay. So doing that would in theory go and fix it. Okay, so just be aware of that. That's something I found in my testing. I was building engines and I couldn't, I couldn't for the life of me figure out why the engine wasn't working. And it was only because that it wasn't actually physically touching the base of my um, creation just over here. So that's something you need to be aware of. Let's go and connect all the logic. Uh, let's do the rope is already done. So now we can jump into, let's do electric. So you'll notice I've already connected all my dials and things to my batteries. All I need to do now for my engine, connect the battery to my starter and to my alternator. Obviously alternators are producing electricity back to my battery and the battery is then sending energy over to the actual starter to get it started. We can now go and connect some of the data. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna connect the starter, which is the push button over to my starter. You will notice that the actual alternator has got a clutch. Okay, so this is going to allow power to come back. If this is zero, you are not generating any electricity. If it's at one, you are, okay? And the same thing goes with the clutch. If it's on a zero, you're not sending any power through the clutch. If it's on a one, you are sending power through. I like to just connect both of those up together. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to my clutch and I'm gonna connect it over to my actual alternator and to my power output. The more power we're sending, the more power we're generating. That's the way I'm building it, you don't have to. The next thing is we need some throttle. Throttle can be connected over to the actual 
intake manifold for the cylinders. Okay, you only have one of those at the moment on this example, and that's where you're gonna be connecting it. If you had it another bank of cylinders and you had its own manifold intake, you could connect another throttle to that and another throttle to that. Okay, so that's just another way you could do it. The last thing we need to connect is of course going to be our clutch pressure. Okay, and this is going to be for our actual fluid pump. How much fluid are we pumping through the engine? I like to connect this to the throttle of my engine. Okay, so I'm gonna connect it over to the throttle of my engine. So the more throttle I put on the engine, the more the pump needs to work. Okay, this is the way I'm gonna be doing it. Once again, you don't have to. And lastly, we can get the readout of the RPS. You'll notice that we can take any one of the crankshaft's RPS. Ideally, they should all be the same, okay, because they're all on the same crankshaft. So we're gonna be taking one of those and connecting that onto our dial on our screen. That's pretty much about it. We can now go and spawn this in. Once you've got it spawned in, you'll notice that we can see just over here, we can see our lovely engine. Unfortunately, nothing has rendered for the drive belt at the moment. I would love to see something here um, can actually rendered in, but maybe that's coming in the future. You'll also notice our fuel is attached. And by the way, I've got all the tool tips uh, enabled so I can actually diagnose and see what the issue is with any of these, um, which is quite nice. So the next thing is I can see that I've already got my throttle over here, which is already on one. I've got my clutch already on one. So everything is engaged. I'm actually going to turn the clutch off. RPS is currently zero and I can go and start the engine. So you can see the engine is started currently. It's revving way up. So I'm going to bring it down quite a bit. Okay. Let's make sure it like kind of idles. I need to bring it up a bit. Yeah, that should be about fine. So you can see it's currently idling at the moment we can actually go and diagnose and have a look at all these different components. So you can see the modular engine coolant manifold is working. We also have our fluid pump is currently working. Our alternator is currently producing electricity. Okay. We also have our starter, which is not on. We have got air and fuel coming in. So you can see air negative 0.00 something and fuel also negative. And we can also go and have a look at our cylinder heads so you can see the temperature of each one of the cylinders we can go and look at the crankshaft they should be all the same rps and we can even look at the clutch which currently has got zero on it okay so pretty cool let's go and put our clutch on let's get our rps up a bit and you can see we are now producing power out of our engine as i said earlier you do not have any exhaust rendering at the moment in this version 1.0.1a but hopefully in the future we will have some exhaust coming out there and there's the engine. Um, as you said, you can scale this up as much as you want. You can make it 12 cylinder, six cylinder, two cylinder, one cylinder, if, even if you wanted to. So that's pretty much about it for a modular engine. Obviously, I'm going to be still playing around this and see the different types of cool engines that I could come up with. Um, so expect to see some more videos on these modular engines. But as always, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this. Obviously, found it somewhat uh, informative and entertaining. And don't forget to obviously subscribe to my channel and click the little bell icon to not miss any of the upcoming content on version one here in Stormworks. And I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.